Kimmy, I'd like to give you the opportunity to respond to a headline. A sad case of a man, Love and Marriage Huntsville fans slam Maurice for demanding intimacy while Kimmy goes through chemotherapy. Kimmy, what is your response to the backlash that Maurice has been getting lately? So here's the thing. Like, originally, I didn't even watch it. He told me he had an interview with Carlos. And usually, I just kind of get the nuts and bolts of it. You know, he was like, well, we did this. He asked me about that. And I didn't do anything. Um, and then when I finally saw stuff just kind of everywhere, I was like, oh, my gosh, what did you say? I literally was like, what did you say? Um, and so one of the comments somebody keeps screenshotting around is the fact that I said, let me go see the interview. And people were like, I don't believe she hasn't seen it. And I just got life. Like, we got stuff. So when I actually did see it, I told them, I said, no, oh, this was my fault. Like, the words that you chose were cruel to me. It wasn't protecting me. The irony of the conversation in itself was that if you actually watch the show, I'm the one who initiated the conversation in regards to the fact that the chemo has affected my libido. Um, and I know that affects him and his sexual injury. So he has never forced me to do one single thing. He has never made me. He has never implied he was going to leave me. So the headlines, in order to get likes and tags, I absolutely get it. But the words that he chose to use throughout that interview, I felt were a bad choice of words in regards to me because it didn't protect me in the words that he chose to use to describe. Like, I think he said, bend over and take it. That's like ridiculous. Like that's ridiculous. And I told him, I said, that was just, that was awful. The wording choice was awful. You know, I wanna, I wanna jump in and say something real quick. I, I was horrified too with some of the language. And um, I was, spoke about having a situation where it was the reverse. I had a man that had some issues. I wanna ask both of you, Kimmy, I want to ask you first, do you feel the pressure? Like, if I don't satisfy my man, even when I don't feel good, am I nervous? Am I, do I feel a way about the future of my marriage? And Maurice, if you could take back what you said, would you rephrase it? Or do you stand on exactly what you said? So for me, like I said, we filmed it and everything. For Kimmy, I never felt like he was going to leave me. That wasn't the case whatsoever. Mm. However, even before our chemo issue came up, we already had conversation about our sex life. We talked about our sex life before we got married. So this is like an honest statement. In Kimmy's world, I had made up in my head seven days was the limit. Like, I would never make my husband go more than seven days. I don't care if we're angry. I don't care what's going on. That was always Kimmy's rule in her head. And so in this case, we went about two weeks and I was like, Ugh. so it was my choice because I know that that's fulfilling for both of us. It's fulfilling for both of us. Like at the end of the day, he's not the only one missing out. I'm missing out because I don't have the same climax. I don't have the same um, arousal. You know what I'm saying? So I never had that conversation based on the fact that I thought he was going to leave. I know I love my husband and that that is a big part of our world. Um, I don't physically hurt. It doesn't hurt me to have sex. It doesn't do that whatsoever. It was just the arousal of the moment and the climax that is very different for me. So I'm just not getting the same fulfillment out of the sexual activity that he was. We got it. So let's get Maurice in here. Maurice, do you think it was selfish for you to force your wife to suffer through it while she was fighting for her life? Your words. Your words. Now, those right. are my words. And I'm going to own the words that I say. However, you have to take everything into full context. I didn't have knowledge of her suffering. I didn't have knowledge of her rolling over and giving it to me when she didn't want to, right? Or didn't feel the need to. At the end of the day, this is the thing. She surprised the hell out of me on television. Talking about, you know what? I'm not getting it. I'm faking it. <laughs> All that stuff. Like, listen, it's on national TV. So I'm like, oh, really? So you're faking it. This whole time, I'm faking that you're doing it. And, and it puts everything into context when you watch the television show and then you actually see the interview. Because for me to find out that she's faking it 
And then for me to analyze a situation and say, it's admirable for her to do this because number one, most people that do things for you let you know that they're doing it for you. They don't let you find out later on, oh wow, you were actually hurting or you were going through something and you were sharing that and you were doing it for me. So of course I would change my words and give better context in any type of interview. However, I still think that so you don't think do it. You don't think it was a little cringy to even want to have sex with her while she was going through that. And I asked that because typically if somebody's not feeling well, we don't make them cook. We don't make them wash the dishes. We may not make them take the, the kids to school and all of those things are oftentimes considered a wife's duty. You didn't think it would be all right for her to forego that one duty while she was going through this? See, this is the thing. We weren't doing all the days she wasn't feeling good. Unless, unless I didn't know that either. Interesting. Interesting. So can you ask, uh, ask you earlier, would you ref rephrase anything that you said? Because it seemed you, your wife just revealed that it was your words, right? You know, you said things, bend over and take it. If you, I, I've done this many times. I've said stuff and it's like, I wish I would have said it like this. Would you rephrase anything? Would you do, would you would do over? Or are you like, no, I, I meant it exactly. Definitely. Anytime my wife feels like she's not protected by whatever I do, that's my job. Mm -hmm. That's why God gave her to me, is to make sure that I have a covering and protection over her at all times. And if she feels like my words are crass, then I'll change my words. Um, I'm not one of those people that say, man, I said what I said. I, now, mind you, that's a great quote and everything else that goes around on social media. I said what I said. I don't even know where that came from. But candy. I'm not one of those people. It came from Candy, me. Candy on the Housewives of Atlanta. She said it on that's one of the reasons. Uh, but I'm not one of them. I said what I said. I said what I said. Hold on. Let me say it better the next time. So I, I got, and I know y'all probably been through this, and we know Martel and, and Melody have gone through this. The fans have been voicing their opinion about Maurice's remarks, and many of them that many of them are saying, you know, Kimmy should leave the relationship. Obviously, you're not going nowhere. But has all this scatterbutt from the fans affected you guys' relationship in any way? Mm, I actually really don't care what people will say that that don't love me. Like they love me one day and they hate me the next. Mm -hmm. You know, I really care what Kimmy says. If Kimmy says it offends her, guess what? I'll be changing. If Monster says it offends him, Jalen, any of the kids, guess what? I'll change. But I think that's a moment in time being on, you know, television that we have to take a lot of comments, whether we agree, don't agree. I usually take most of them with a grain of salt most of the time. However, I think I, you know, some of our fans to me just go overboard, like really for real. But in general, I felt like a lot of them were warranted that the communication, it was crass. I mean, it was crass and, you know, non-protecting, disrespectful. Um, a lot of those comments were on point. And, and I, I, I got to well, say this as the woman here, and I'm sorry, Al, I know you haven't had a chance to say anything. I still haven't heard him rephrase it in a kinder way right here on the show. I've been trying to give you the opportunity because... I feel like your wife is protecting you more than you're protecting her. I feel like she's protecting your rep. And I'm like, I, I, Kimmy, I'm, I should have said it like this. I'm sorry. And it's like, I feel so bad. For, like, I can't imagine going through what she's going through. You saying that and then me asking you twice if you would rephrase it. And you said, yeah, but you really haven't. It seems like it's more about you than her still. In my opinion, we, it's just my yeah. opinion. And you can tell me shut the fuck up if you want to. It's just my opinion, you know? Let me no, I understand where you're coming from. And and what I said is you gotta get it in the context. I'm not going to rephrase you said what I rephrase it. Yes, I would rephrase it. But at the end of the day, what is our we're talking about this because I've already said something, right? There's no taking it back, there's there's no ringing that bell. That bell's rung. That's why we're here. At right. the end of the, in the future, what I will do is I'll make sure that my wife feels protected. I don't feel any different about the situation. At the end of the day, my wife did something that most people won't do. Simply, she put her personal feelings aside. I never wanted her to do anything that, that was uncomfortable. I wanted her to stop working. I wanted her to put everything to the side and let's get better. So when she's doing things to find a sense of normalcy in life, guess what? I don't know 
because I'm not inside of her. What makes her feel good? What doesn't make her feel good? When she's feeling good, when she's not. So at the end of the day, you know what? Worries, I, just, go worries, ahead. I feel that.